It's time for Tales of Terror, only on the Mutual Audio Network. The following audio drama is rated R and is recommended restricted for anyone under the age of 17. We're Alive listeners. As many of you know, We're Alive started 15 years ago with our flagship show, We're Alive, a story of survival. It was one of the first zombie audio dramas of its kind and pioneered the genre. Fifteen years and seven seasons later, We're Alive is coming to a fateful and epic conclusion, and we're so excited to show you what we have in store for our final two seasons of Descendants. But to get there, we'll need your help. And that's why we've launched a Kickstarter to help fund our final chapters. Your support will help us gather our immensely talented cast, as well as our tireless award-winning sound designers and production crew who bring the groundbreaking world of We're Alive to life. Additionally, we have exclusive merchandise, rewards, content, and experiences available for our generous donors. The closer we get to our various stretch goals and tiers, the closer we get to being able to finish the epic story of We're Alive. The Kickstarter is live, and you can visit by searching for We're Alive on Kickstarter or going to our website at waylandproductions.com or we'realive.com for more information. Wherever you are on your well-being journey, Audible is there for you. You'll discover voices that motivate to spark you to take action. The best time to start is right now. There are sounds to soothe, so you can focus, reduce stress, and sleep better. Stories to inspire, so you can dream big again. One, lift off. And a range of personalities, so you'll have a partner on your journey. Get closer to the best you with bestsellers, new releases, and exclusive originals, all ad-free. Listen now on Audible. With DoorDash, dash that delicious whenever a craving hits. Dash that late night burger and that lunchtime lox. Dash that post workout protein and that poke bowl. Taste of the Tropics is on now. Get 30% off orders of $20 or more. DoorDash. Terms apply. Hey, I'm Tom Power. I'm the host of the CBC podcast Q with Tom Power. I get to talk to artists from all over the world writers, musicians, actors, directors, all kinds of creative people. And we try to have the conversations you'd have with really, really good friends. The conversations you have when you share a love of something, about ideas, when you want to hear about everything. I feel really lucky to have these conversations. Q with Tom Power, available now on CBC Listen or wherever you get your podcasts. Milestones aren't for looking back. They remind us to keep moving forward, to turn what we've done into what we can do, turning everyday necessities into electrifying possibilities, turning a new vehicle into the new standard, introducing the first ever Mazda CX-70. Our largest two-row SUV, available as a mild hybrid inline six turbo or as a plug-in hybrid, crafted to move every part of you. Marketers and advertisers, brands big and small, you've been after a special someone for a while now. You think they're into you. I mean, you share the same interests, both passionate about the same stuff. Why wouldn't they be? Wait. There's a moment of silence. It's finally just you two alone. They're waiting. Go on, shoot your shot. You've got a voice. Use it now. Hearts are racing. Breathing becomes heavier. This is your chance to win them over. So what are you going to say? Get closer to your audience. Make podcast ads with Acast. Head to go.acast.com slash closer to get started. We're Alive, a story of survival. Chapter 42 Chasing Ghosts Part 3 of 3 
We came in the back gate where you found us. It was wide open. Robin, Smoldoon, Carl, and I all decided to go in together. Splitting up in two didn't sound like a good idea, and since we had Datu's gun, the truck wouldn't matter as much. I got Datu's gun unless someone else... Nah, that's a bit heavy for me. Go ahead. Just make sure you got your rifle, too. There's only seven shots, so only use it on either the big kind or those numbered ones. Once we get inside, where are we headed? Uh, Kelly said she thinks Tower 1 was for the guys, two for the chicks. But those are the cells. We want to go to where they kept all the records. I think that's going to be somewhere around the front, you know? So same deal as Radon, in the murderer's house, right? Poke around for anything about him? Yeah, whatever might be useful. And if we happen to find any weapons, that's a plus. Robbins, you got points since you got that thing. Try not to block our view, all right? I know it'll be tough, but uh, think thin. Yeah, no, definitely. As long as you promise to keep quiet, they'll hear your bitchy voice from miles away. How about everyone shuts up and starts walking, okay? That way. Go. In case we get turned around in there, I'm gonna mark our trail behind us. With what? Duct tape. Kelly said it's probably amazing there. And dark as shit. Clear. There's a directory here. IRC. Inmate reception center. That way. Good place to start. Okay. Eyes to the sides, you two. I got the rear. We went through the front, where the jellies, inmates, whatever you call them, came through. Place was a mess. Wasn't even locked. Doors were wide open. I think some attacks took place in there, but there weren't any bodies. Just old bloodstains. It's been like half an hour. Only thing we found was this. Carl had the hard copies, but still got pictures. It's a report of Inky's tattoos. He drew them on his cell wall, and, and then that Cohen guy did the rest. There's no up-close shots of our guy, but thought the pics of the drawings might be something. That was the best we could dig up. How many people you think came through here? For the look of it, a lot. All right, well, this is kind of a waste. Whatever else they had on our guy was in the computer. Fucking paperless government bullshit. We should head back to the truck. Would they have anything on them in the cell blocks? Should we check Tower 1? I don't think that's a good idea. We'd hate to miss something if it's right here, you know. This is the last place we gotta check. And we got this thing. Carl, you wanna weigh in on it? Whatever you guys think, it's still early. Not that daylight matters. It's dark as shit in here anyway. Let's backtrack a bit. I think there's a way in a tower one closer to our truck. All right, duct tape lead the way. We headed back to the loading dock and around to where we thought the entrance to the cell blocks were. I think this is just storage. I'll keep going anyway. Yeah, this is all laundry stuff. Got a security door coming up. No way of getting through that without There's uh... keys in the door. What? It looks clear on the other side. Should I? Yeah, go ahead. Slowly. Clear. Keep going? All right, slowly, slowly. But here, take these with us. I'm gonna prop open these doors. It'll be harder to get out than in. Good call. Okay, this way. We went around a few halls and some rooms. Don't know what any of those were for, but we did find the riot room. This one's gotta be it. Oh, sweet. All right, now this is what I'm talking about. Tasers? Who wants to try them out? Make sure they still work. Oh, not me. I had to get shot for training once. It was not fun. Robin, you want to try? I'm sure it's fine and all. You got enough cushion. Greg, can you please not screw around for once? Just having fun. Take it easy, big fella. Are these grenades? They're called stingers. And these are rubber bullets. Oh, man. It's a prison. It's all about non-lethal takedown. Thanks a lot, America. Well, those grenades will still hurt like shit. Just sends out rubber pellets instead of shrapnel. Whatever happened to Deadly Force? I don't think they've done that for a while. All right, fuck it. Grab what you can. Maybe these gas canisters will come in handy. Those won't matter against the zombies. It'll be worse for us. Leave them. Yeah, tried that in Irwin, remember? Didn't work. So is this it for here? Keep moving? 
I guess. Want to drop this stuff off in the truck? I think we parked it, like, right there. Nah, this ain't heavy. Just keep moving. I think the cells for Tower 1 are on the other side of that. At the end of the hall, there were two big barred walls, or gates, or whatever. It's this picture. They were spaced one after the other. We had to unlock both to get in. I'll get it. Yeah, we're definitely on the prisoner side now. Inmates, this isn't a prison. Whatever, same thing. Biggest damn jail I ever saw. Wouldn't be surprised if it is the biggest. Something died in there. Okay, I've seen enough of this place. What about you guys? Don't be such a pussy. Seriously. We're gonna run into a few dead bodies. Just expect that. This place was probably on lockdown. Yeah, those Mola guys that Michael was talking about from that prison? Someone let them out. Might not be the case here. This one won't move. Is it locked? No. We'll try another way in. I think there's another door down there. That door. It was like something was on the other. Oh. My. God. Holy crap. That's more than a few. When we went into the chow hall, there were probably about 30 or 40 bodies rotted away in blue jumpsuits. It's like a fight had happened in there. Chairs and tables were piled up against the doors, except for the one that we had just come through. And that one looked like it had been forced, with the doors on the ground. The bodies were missing large pieces, as if they'd been picked clean. It's like they had a little riot on their hands. I don't know if you can call it that. They must have had an outbreak of their own. Yeah, but they couldn't get out, so they held up in here. Obviously didn't work. That sucks. Hey, don't feel bad for them. They ain't no innocents. Does it matter? No one deserves to die like, like that. Yeah. They sure took a few chunks out of them, didn't they? Didn't have anything else to eat. As much as this would make front page of Fangoria, it ain't that useful. Maybe we should take this as a sign. Turn around? Nah, these have been dead for months. If anything, it's a good sign. There's no way out through here. Better head back into the hallway. Exit's this way, right? Yeah, put down another arrow. We got a three-way over here. When is that a bad thing? Not with your mom, Muldoon. With the hallway. It branches off. Eeny, meeny. Now fuck it. This way. I'll do another marker. Oh, hey, I think this might be solitary. How can you tell? There's a sign. Oh, makes sense. Carl, I think we're gonna need those keys again. Coming. Maybe not. Door's broken. It was a long hall. A two-way mirror spanned the wall on the left. We could shine the flashlights in and see through the other side, where I guess, you know, someone could watch the inmates without them knowing. And to the right, a row of metal doors, each with a large window to look inside. Well, there was really only one door left intact, and the rest had all been broken in, like big time. Oh, damn. Take it slow. Check everyone before moving on, and the room's to the left. This must have been the snack pack section of jail. Would you not? It's true. Zombies get hungry enough, and yeah. Well, you can see it. There's one door still intact. Maybe it was empty? No. There's someone inside there. Oh, God. He rotted away. Should I open it? Why? Dude. Back up. What? There's something on the door. That's when we noticed it. On the door, there was this mark. Three lines on top. Arched like a rainbow. And then underneath, five lines spread out like a fan coming to a point. Who the fuck drew that? Is that in blood? It's not the only one. There's one on every door. Let me see. Those are different. 
That one looks like a fish on fire. This other one's a snake. Bird foot on this one. Cross with a triangle on it? I know this one. This is the Egyptian eye thing, right? Take a look at the pictures of what Ink got tattooed. A few of those match what we found here. Can't tell what this one was. Door isn't here anymore. But there is a bunch of hair. Ugh. Okay, so this place wins first for being most fucked up. Anything else? There's another door. Another hall, too. More of the same? I wish. Hey, Hotels.com here. Tired of living like a sardine? We know a hotel where you can enjoy the open ocean. Book hotels with ocean views in the Hotels.com app. Find your perfect somewhere. Wherever you are on your well-being journey, Audible is there for you. You'll discover voices that motivate to spark you to take action. The best time to start is right now. There are sounds to soothe so you can focus, reduce stress, and sleep better. Stories to inspire so you can dream big again. One lift off. And a range of personalities so you'll have a partner on your journey. Get closer to the best you with bestsellers, new releases, and exclusive originals. All ad-free. Listen now on Audible. With DoorDash, dash that delicious whenever a craving hits. Dash that late night burger and that lunchtime locks. Dash that post-workout protein and that poke bowl. Taste of the Tropics is on now. Get 30% off orders of $20 or more. DoorDash. Terms apply. The Block is about building community around black music. Music that shapes culture. With beats that feed our hearts. Melodies that make our memories and rhythms that shape our lives. They say you are what you hear. And when you hear The Block, you know that you belong. Join me, Angeline Tedeweo, on The Block. Weeknights at 7 on CBC Music. Or anytime on the CBC Listen app. Marketers and advertisers, brands big and small. You've been after a special someone for a while now. You think they're into you. I mean, you share the same interests, both passionate about the same stuff. Why wouldn't they be? Wait. There's a moment of silence. It's finally just you two alone. They're waiting. Go on, shoot your shot. You've got a voice. Use it now. Hearts are racing. Breathing becomes heavier. This is your chance to win them over. So what are you going to say? Get closer to your audience. Make podcast ads with Acast. Head to go.acast.com slash closer to get started. This hall was the opposite. Instead of the doors broken in, these were all broken out. And each one had sheets of papers clipped next to it. They were printouts saying who was supposed to be in what cell and, and what they did. And, and these doors had no markings or symbols, but on each sheet that the gel made, a few words were handwritten on it in black ink. What the fuck? Ernest Hafer, 37, inmate conflict, and added at the bottom, somatropin, folis, and then it gets messy. George Armstrong, 53, inmate conflict, stenolazole, stenolzolol, and folistatin. Hey, that's some of the shit from Radon. Austin McKibben, folistatin. Shit, this guy had magnets on his door. Combative, spitter, do not open unless deputy is present. Clarence Cohen, contraband. Can't read what this says, it looks like scribbles. There's Kenneth Terrell on this one, but nothing else written. Matter of fact, this one wasn't broken out. One of those you recognize, right, Bert? Yeah, the McKibben guy. Why didn't you try and call us at that point? I'm getting that. Kenneth would have been the control. Wait, what was that? 
Roberts was testing on them, and he still had enough coherency to use a control. Wow. Well, how do you know he did any of that? I guess we don't, but who else would it be? Also, I recognize one of the other names. Um, Cohen? That's the one who was blamed for tattooing him. But if it was Roberts, how'd he get back in? The place was mostly unlocked, and someone left keys. Are you seeing this? I doubt unlocking a few doors is beneath him. Um, you want to talk about that later? Let him continue. Yeah, so we're sorry. Go ahead. So, we did try calling you. Just didn't go through. Kelly. Kelly, come in. God damn it. Can you hear us? Hello? This place is solid. There's too much interference. Okay, that means we leave. I mean, this is cool and all, but... There's another one over here. It's... Oh. The last cell at the end had a... Well, I don't know what it was anymore. The body had mostly rotted away or been eaten. But we could see the bones on one side, and they were bulky and, and big. And on the other side, they were small. Like, it had only been changed halfway. Is this where the big fuckers came from? Wait, what about the cell numbers? You think they match the numbered kinds? 26, 7... I sure hope not. There's another door, here. Another row. And all these were busted open as well. At least 20 more. Oh, shit. How many of these are there? Wait. Here's number two, and... Oh, fuck. I think he's, like, turned inside out. They're killing each other. Good. What else are they gonna eat? This one. Cell six. Got giant leg bones, but that's it. Doesn't really have a head anymore. Hold on. The little one with the number two is at the crash site near Boulder. These aren't those kinds. Wasn't that a chick, though? These are all dudes in this wing. Oh, yeah. But there was a six or a nine on the list of the little ones, both dead. And I got a number six right here. Are you sure? Um... Yeah, yeah. The number on the jumpsuit matches the paper here. These weren't the little ones. We got only seven shots with that big gun. And there's a lot of empty rooms here. We're getting the fuck out. Turn around. Head back. That was from the other solitary block. We just came that way. How many could be left in here? Alive. Whatever lived is on the other side. S so the worst ones are left. Oh, God. Right this way. Robbins, watch our rear. We moved out the other end of the solitary into the main wing. This section had no bars, but entire cells divided by glass and steel. Kind of had that modern look. Fuck, where's the exit? This way, this way. What about... Where's that coming from? Everywhere. Fuck it. This way. <sighs> Shit! Robin! Still too far! Ah! Grenade? Oh no, that'll just hurt us! Almost! Worked! I fucking love this thing! Alright, that way! As I passed the body, I looked at it. Its middle was like all shriveled and shit. It was starving. The rest had massive bulges along its neck and arms. The cancer. Which way now? It sure helped if there were fucking windows in this place! Not that way! Fuck! 
One came at us through the wall, knocking cement and bricks everywhere. It was a big one. But this one had a massive head, with like bone spurs growing out of it. I don't know how it saw anything past its cheeks, but when we fired at it, but that just pissed it off. The robins had to fire twice. It was so thick. But eventually it went down. Four shots left! Make them count! Muldoon! Where's Muldoon? It happened so quick. We didn't even see him get buried beneath the wall. Greg! Greg! Oh shit! No, 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 Greg! We don't have time! Buck, take the gun! Coral, help me! Man, this is heavy! Hey, you're not coming! Greg! Sorry. You guys, help me! Come on! Pull this off of him! Guys! Robin just kept digging. Tossing shit aside, they fell on Muldoon. He didn't notice the two big pieces of bent rebar going through Muldoon's legs, soaking his pants in blood. Greg, hang in there, man! Hang in there, man! I've almost got you out! Hold on! We can't! We got no time! Come on! Let's move! No! I don't know how the fuck he did it. But Robin's barehanded, reached over, and bent the bars enough to pull Muldoon out of that fucking mess. Holy shit! We're not leaving him! He's bleeding all over! I can't... I can't move... anything. What? Just... just go. No, man, I can't... I can't. Uh, Fuck it! This one's mine! Uh, Three shots left! Go. No, man, I'm getting you out of here. I got you. This way! started doing CPR. Middle of the fucking hallway, crying his eyes out. Greg! But it didn't do any good. Don't leave me, man. Come on. He paid more attention to Muldoon than what was going on around him. Come on! So when the next one rounded the corner, he didn't even have time to respond. This one moved really fast. I fired, but I missed. Heads up! By the time I got the words out, it was already halfway swinging at Robin's. Knocking him against the wall. He didn't survive. No! 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 Oh, no! 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 Piece of shit! Oh my god! Come on! Come on! Gates! Gates! Both gates are closed! Did you fucking shut it? No! 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 I left it open! You got the keys! Open it! Come on! Now! Open it! There's another one coming! What the fuck is this one? This one was different. It had large patches of hair dropping down its huge frame. Just about every tooth in its head pointed outwards. Its arms were already covered in blood. Out of all of them, this one was the best fit. Shit! Find it, come on! There's so many! I got it! Close it! Close it! Close it! That fuzzy fucker reached through and grabbed Carl and slammed him into the ground. Carl went down and he wasn't gonna get back up. I kept shooting 
But it did nothing. I didn't think after that. I just grabbed the keys from the second gate. I unlocked the first. I mean, I barely got it open. When it was right on my heels. And I didn't get a chance to lock it in. I booked it down the hall. And by the time I got outside. I mean, it must have known where I was going because... It had already made it to the truck before I did. It smashed into it. And I just remember it swinging its arms again and, and hitting me against something. I heard the sound of my leg snap. And everything just started spinning. I mean, it took its time getting to me, just glaring the whole way. And my one good arm, I reached into my bag. When it was close enough for me to smell its breath, I shot the taser straight into its face. And it screamed, so I shoved the sting of grenade into its mouth. Die, motherfucker! It stumbled back. And boom. Bye bye, head. Then I crawled over the truck. And I got you on the radio. That's... Oh, Puck. I'm so sorry. I can type all this up and... I'm not done yet. After I called you, I heard something. The gates I didn't close slammed shut inside the jail. And then there he was. He walked over and just stared at me on the ground. My rifle was so heavy, but I gave it everything to pick it up. And he just stood there and smiled. All I could see was the white of his teeth against his dark ink face. He just turned and walked away. Was around the corner before I was able to get a shot off. His eyes. He knows exactly what he's doing. You need to kill him, Michael. Or soon there won't be any of us left. Join us again Monday for the next episode of We're Alive. And now, a word from our sponsors. Hey, Hotels.com here. Struggling to keep up with your toddler? We know a hotel that'll keep them entertained. Book family-friendly hotels with pools in the Hotels.com app to find your perfect somewhere. Wherever you are on your well-being journey, Audible is there for you. You'll discover voices that motivate to spark you to take action. The best time to start is right now. There are sounds to soothe so you can focus, reduce stress, and sleep better. Stories to inspire so you can dream big again. One lift off. And a range of personalities so you'll have a partner on your journey. Get closer to the best you with bestsellers, new releases, and exclusive originals. All ad-free. Listen now on Audible. With DoorDash, dash that delicious whenever a craving hits. Dash that late night burger and that lunchtime lox. Dash that post workout protein and that poke bowl. Taste of the tropics is on now. Get 30% off orders of $20 or more. DoorDash. Terms apply. Hi there. My name is Alameen Abdul Mahmoud. I am the host of the CBC podcast, Commotion. That's a show where we talk about all things pop culture. We talk about what people are watching, what people are listening to. We get into everything from celebrity beefs to TikTok trends. And look, we're not afraid to get a little controversial. We're talking about things like the Oscar snubs or is Drake really a hip hop artist? Commotion with Elamine Abdul Mahmoud, available on CBC Listen or wherever you get your podcasts. Milestones aren't for looking back, they remind us to keep moving forward, to turn what we've done into what we can do, turning everyday necessities into electrifying possibilities turning a new vehicle into the new standard introducing the first ever mazda cx-70 our largest two-row suv available as a mild hybrid inline six turbo or as a plug-in hybrid 
crafted to move every part of you. Starring Jim Gleason, Nate Gies, Shirley Jordan, Constance Parn, Scott Marvin, Brett Newton, Tammy Klein, Sean Lewin, Christian Vieira, Tony Ray, and I'm Michael Swan. Written and directed by Casey Whalen. Produced by Grayson Stone and Casey Whalen. Composer Daniel Burkov Hopkins. Series artist Ben Hosack. Editors Grayson Stone and Casey Whalen. Zinterns Lauren Kroon, Ray Husky. Voice cutter Brent McLean. Print editor Elisa Elliott. Line producers Grayson Stone and Blair Whalen. To find out more and for a full list of cast and crew, please visit our website at we'realive.com. Be sure to follow us on Twitter and Facebook for all production related updates and future projects. Thank you for listening to this audio theater for the mind by Wayland Productions. <laughs>